Here we have a 1959, uh, it's been known as the Granger guitar, and now it's the Sean guitar. <laughs> Gary Granger. And uh, I was, you know, looking for a 59 that was really clean like this, that, you know, had a beautiful top to it. And um, this guitar was, you know, I saw it and I was like, wow, you know, it was like a must have to check out. Amazing 59 here. It's all good, it's all right. Everything in it checks out. And it's just really, really clean. And a really cool top to it. It's like kind of burnt, you know, a little more burnt around the edges than some of the others. Um, but classic 59 tone, you know. Okay, so this was my, like, guitar that I traveled with. It was in my room all the time. And um, before Steve Perry was in the band, we were traveling around with about six guys in the car, and our driver was all fatigued because Herbie was beating on him, Pat Morrow. And was saying, I need to stop over and get a candy bar <laughs> so he could wake up. And I, you know, everybody was taking a break and getting out of the car and stretching. And so I pulled the guitar out uh, and sat on the car and just started like playing like the wheel song. They came up with the chorus that day, you know, I kind of like grabbed the guitar and I went, we in the sky keeps on turning. Don't know where I'll be tomorrow. When Steve Perry first came out to hang out and see if we had anything going on, this is the guitar I had in my room. We got together and just, you know, I pulled out the acoustic guitar and I started playing impatiently some music I put together. And within a half an hour, we had the song, you know. This guitar made it on all of our first three records with Perry. My first good guitar when I started playing, I started playing at 10 and at 12, uh, my father bought me a, a, a really nice 335 and it got stolen. And so when the insurance money came in, I went down and I traded in on a new reissue gold top, 1968, Les Paul. And this had P90s at the time. This is the guitar that was on the first Santana, uh, first album I ever played on, on Santana 3. Uh, and this is the guitar that you hear that I'm exchanging all the solos with, uh, with Carlos all, throughout that record. And this was on Everybody's Everything, which was like, I believe our number one single off that record with Tower, a power playing horns. Carlos played bass and rhythm guitar on it, and I played lead on the single, and it went number one. This has been in Ghana, Africa, you name it. It's been everywhere. Uh, soul to Soul with Santana, and um, everywhere Santana played throughout Europe because they were huge everywhere. And then uh, Santana disbanded with those band members, and Greg Raleigh and I left, and I started Journey with, with our ex-manager, Herbie Herbert, and then Greg came into that as well. It made it made it on Look Into the Future, all those early Journey records. That was this guitar and an old 59 triple pickup. Les Paul that I had, but this was the one that sounded good. The 59 just looked cool. It didn't sound that good, and so I ended up selling that. But um, this guitar has got some miles on it. Been on a lot of records, second Journey record, Third Journey record, it might have been on a couple tracks, mainly the second record. It's got the original frets, and this neck is really unique, man. A 68 Les Paul, you know, reissue. It was one of my favorite necks ever. It's wide, and it's thin this way. 
and just always sounded great. The frets were at the right height. You know, they're not skinny. They're like wide, but they're flat. So you hear a lot of the wood with the guitar, you know, when you're playing it. And um, so that's the story on this one. So this, this uh, has got quite a story. <laughs> it's, it's been on like major records, albums of ours, uh, mainly Escape and Frontiers. And it is the guitar I played, Who's Crying Now On, and uh, uh, Stone in Love. But everywhere you hear like a Paul, this is the Paul on those records. This one went everywhere uh, on our Escape Tour and Frontiers Tour. And um, then actually made it on some other records too. Like I did uh, a record that was with all the, the original Santana guys. But Carlos didn't want to join us, and so we called it a Braxis pool. And uh, we did a record, and this is all over that record. Uh, I played on many different records. This is Jan Hammer and myself, first two co-solo records, uh, Here to Stay and uh, Untold Passion. This is the same guitar, and I use it into a high watt uh, that I use with all the Journey stuff. And man, this thing has been on a lot of records. And still got the Ferrari sticker I put on the back, except it got chopped into because I put the sustainer in many years later. Very cool, uh, great sounding guitar to this day and uh, a lot of history. This is the other Jumbo Gill. This is a great, great loud 12. This, this has got pretty much the same story that goes with the other Gill that I told. Um, it's on all those same records. Uh, it's on Wheel in the Sky. It's on uh, just the same way uh, off the you know Evolution record with Greg Rowley and, and Steve Perry and the rest of the band. And this was you know one of the acoustics that Roy Thomas Baker had me double with the other six strings, sometimes a nylon with it too. But everywhere you hear like a Daydream, any songs that you hear acoustic guitar mixed in with electric, it's this guitar or the other guild.